All right, Athens, tell us your story. A podcast featuring the people of Athens and Limestone County, Alabama. The stories are as unique as the people themselves, but they all reveal the character, the culture, and the distinct voices of a classic Southern community. Well, my name is Freddie Smith, and I was born in 1948. I've lived in Athens all my life, and uh, never lived outside this county. Uh, I've always lived and loved Athens. You know, it used to be the small town that everybody liked to go and visit and walk around the square and most everything that went on in Athens back in those days were within the courthouse. You could see the courthouse from each of those north, south, east, and west row of buildings. If you know where the old post office is, the tall building uh, sits on uh, Washington Street. The little Dairy Delight, Cream Delight, that we call it, I can remember when my granddaddy built that in the mid-50s, the very beginning. My dad was, uh, of course, he was a World War II vet and had been disabled in Germany in uh, 1944. And he was 100% disabled, so he was very limited to what his uh, vocation could be, you know. So we didn't have money. We didn't have a lot of money, you know. We'd, I can remember still looking under the couch cushions for a quarter or a dime or a nickel. Uh, so we'd go to... Across the backyard is a couple of streets over to the little mom and pop stores, which I lived on Urban Street, north of uh, Pryor. And when my dad come out of service, and they did a lot of evaluation of veterans on what degree of disability they were. And he'd have to go to Memphis and stay a week, and we'd stay out there in the country. With my granddad, I can remember popping popcorn and putting it on a newspaper and putting it in your lap. The heat you had was a propane tank in the backyard and the space heaters and that you'd have to light the heater, you know, in the wintertime. You know, they had chickens and he had some cows. And Saturday was a big day in the country because you only went to town one day a week. You'd have to go to the A&P and buy the 8 o'clock coffee, and you did all your shopping for the week on Saturday. And, you know, the telephone didn't ring like it does now. You know, you had three channels on TV, and it was just a slower time. You know, everybody wasn't in a hurry. And if you wanted to have a conversation with somebody, everybody had time to stop and talk and exchange ideas and thoughts and Probably some gossip. Uh, Most everybody knew each other. And uh, you didn't have subdivision stuff. Most everybody lived on the street. You know, Houston Street or 3rd Avenue. or They didn't take out sections of farmland. That's one thing that used to really bother my mother is, you know, building all this stuff on farmland. And I don't know how many times I heard her say, I don't know what we're all going to eat said, they're going to take all the land up. I can remember, you know, you left your keys in your car. It was nothing unusual for somebody to have a flat tire. And first car come on them, they'd stop. I want to help them if they could. You didn't lock your doors. So I can remember people just opening the door and saying, Hey, y'all home? Y'all busy? Are you decent? (laughs) you go to bed at night and your doors was unlocked. You know, you could walk right in because you just, you couldn't think of a reason why not. But it was different in a good way than what it is now. Everybody's in such a hurry, you know. Technology is just taking everybody away from each other. Because, you know, used to, uh, you'd pick up the telephone and you'd have an operator that said, no place. And uh, I remember our phone number we live was 1259J and uh, the Ritz Theater is 32. There was no rhyme or reason to telephone numbers. But I can st- still remember uh, I think I was in the fourth grade. We had a big assembly and they actually demonstrated dialing a telephone. The principal, Mr. Owens, called California just by spinning the dial. 
didn't have to have an operator or anything. We were just, I mean, astonished. We couldn't believe that you could really do such a thing. I still remember that like it was yesterday. A big holiday for us, like July the 4th, you know, we would go find us one of the parks and, you know, build you a campfire and pitch you a tent. And we just enjoyed that thoroughly, you know. Didn't take any money. You, if you had a pack of firecrackers or maybe two, you took them one at a time and you shot them because, you know, it was like a dime a pack then. And you kind of preserved what you had, you know, you didn't waste it because it may be a while before we have it again. And that's true of a lot of things. You know, a Coca-Cola, RC, you know, it come in returnable bottles and there was a quarter for six of them in a little carton. And uh, if you didn't have your bottles, it cost you 35 cents instead of a quarter. So we'd save the bottles, take them back over and you'd get a nickel apiece for the bottles. And you'd have enough to buy another carton. So, yeah, we kind of miser a little bit. Kind of miser you know, I, I like history. Uh, at the time, you didn't think a lot about it, you know, when they would tear down these old historic buildings. And uh, But Ross Hotel, the original Ross Hotel. And if you know where the new courthouse annex is, right there, that's where it was. And when I first got my driver's license, which was 1963, I needed some money because I needed to buy a gasoline. So uh, I got a job at the Ross Hotel, and it's just like half a block from the railroad. And back then, you had two tracks. We had six passenger trains that run a day through Athens, three north and three south. Back in those days, you know, the closer you get to the railroad was, you know, that's where your goods and services and mail and all that stuff was handled, and that was kind of the, the heart of the town <laughs> was the railroad track. TVA, when they was building Browns Ferry, and uh, a lot of those workers would come in on Monday afternoon, and they would stay Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They'd stay four nights a week, and then go home for the weekend, and then they'd be back on Monday. Some interesting people stayed there, too. If uh, anybody's familiar with billiards, the game of billiards, there's a guy that's well-known Steve Miserak, he's passed away now, and he stayed there. If you stayed there constantly, full-time, which he was a student at Athens College, and then it was in Athens State, and you could stay seven days for the price of six, and it was two bucks a day if you wanted a room in the older part of the hotel, and then the ones that had private baths were three dollars and a half a night, and it was Maybe 10 or 12 regulars, we'd call them. There used to be a, a journalist in Athens. His name was Bob Henry Walker. He had one arm, and he was a reporter for, I think, the uh, Limestone Democrat newspaper. Of course, it's news courier now, but I can remember every time a siren would come through town, he would always come down the stairs and come in the office area of the hotel and call to see what it was about. He wanted to scoop on that. Religiously, that's what he did. He was there seven days a week for a long, long time. Uh, the old part, there's a two-story section. It was the original Ross Hotel. And then uh, Ms. Betsy Ross, who was a librarian at Athens High School, and Ms. Ross lived in the ground floor of the old building. Of course, Ross, you know, Ross Hotel. And then uh, the new part, as we called it, the brick was built later and then they were attached. But you used to have people that would uh, come into the hotel and they would sit on that big front porch and swing, you know, and uh, they may be playing their harmonica or such as that, you know. It was a kind of a gathering point, but those conversations were always good. People enjoyed the time together. And, you you know, you find out a lot about people that uh, can help you get to know them better or maybe not want to get to know them any better. But those conversations were always good for not only the ones that lived there and the ones that worked and came in stayed, but 
It was kind of a, an area that people were very familiar with. You didn't have a whole lot of business and so forth to compete with. And to my knowledge, until uh, they started building some motels out on 31, we didn't have anything. And in the wintertime, the uh, heat that was supplied to that building, the old radiator-style heat, and you'd have to go to the basement and stoke the furnace. Depending on the temperature outside, every three or four hours, you'd have to go down and shovel that coal into that big burner or that hopper that fed the burner, you know. And you had to, you know, pay close attention because if the actual flame and the, the furnace burned out, Nobody had any heat and no hot water. Uh, and I don't know the year, but there was a, a fire that started in the old part. And uh, I know my dad used to say, if this place ever catches fire, I said, it's just a tinderbox. box. said, it'll burn in no time. And that's what happened. It, it burned down. But I, I cannot remember. I know it was after after 1966, I know. You know the old saying that hindsight's twenty twenty. That's definitely true when you go back. And you know, I didn't take it that special then, but I guess that's what made that special. It was just at a slow pace, and most everybody not only knew each other living in the county, they cared more about each other. It was a different mentality the way the way people felt about each other. You didn't see a lot of hatred. You, you, you never heard of anybody killing anybody else. Uh, a murder, I mean, it received a lot of hype, a lot of interested people, but it's probably because they weren't every day like they are now. You know, I still remember when I was sitting in uh, my ninth grade English class when uh, Kennedy was assassinated. Still remember that, and most everybody that was there then, I don't mean at school, I just mean the time, remember where they were and what they were doing. It was just right before Thanksgiving, and, uh, you know, of course, all the flags was half-mast. Uh, yeah, everybody was glued to the TV, you know, and watched everything that was broadcast about that. I can still remember the horse, you know, that had the backward boots in the stirrups. But it really shook the country. It was just a sadness, you know, a very deep sadness. And I guess we really didn't understand what it meant or why it happened. But, you know, we still ask those kind of questions today. And, you know, Kennedy was the first real jar of a very bad, serious, sad time. Kennedy was the first for me. And then, of course, uh, you had Martin Luther King and then uh, Robert Kennedy. So it seemed like it was a string of them for over a course of a few years there. And I didn't, I really never understood why. And 9-11 was bad. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it jarred me. I guess because you expected it. But then, you know, you know, the news apps you get, you look at, uh, two dead, three dead, five killed. You know, it's just scan through it and go to the next one because it's so common. But that's that's another thing that's changed. You know, you just didn't have things like that back then. I do like the older times better. Just slower, happier, quieter. I guess if I had a preference, it would be that people kind of slow down and try to, as I say, stop to smell the roses a little more instead of being in such a hurry. Of course, I guess I got a lot of nostalgia about Athens, so the way it used to be. But I guess one of the things that makes Athens special is uh, it's big enough but not too big. If I had my choice of living somewhere else, I wouldn't. I'd still live here. It's just special. 
You've been listening to All Right Athens, produced by the Athens Limestone County Public Library. If you or anyone you know would like to be featured on our podcast, please visit our website at alcpl.org for ways to submit your story. All Right Athens is part of our Library Voices series and available on your favorite podcast platform.